Hey, what up, you guys? This is my full on review on the movie Unplanned. I'd be the youngest director in Planned Parenthood history. You'll actually be in charge of the abortions at your clinic? I have a chance to make a real difference. No matter what you do for the rest of your life, you're still gonna be a baby killer. So, for those who don't know, Unplanned is based upon the book and true life story of Abby Johnson. Abby Johnson is someone who worked in Planned Parenthood for eight years, was a director of her affiliation, and in 09 left Planned Parenthood and became a pro-life activist ever since. So I got to see this movie twice and I loved it both times and I am so elated because this movie is so important that this movie landed in the fourth spot in the domestic box office opening weekend. So super awesome for it. So in this review I'm going to touch upon some spoilers, some of my thoughts about the movie as well as my political and religious takes as well. So yeah, let's do it. So again, I thought this movie was really great. I got to see it both times and really I just wanted, I, I thought it was very powerful watching it the first time and I wanted to validate if those feelings were still true and genuine the second time around and it was and I'm really glad that it was. So the movie itself is great. I'm glad that it's not heavily political, heavy religious and again it was really done well. So just like I said in my quick movie review on my Instagram at HeyMitchMitch, I said that this movie had is slightly graphic and yeah because there's so blood and maybe that's partially, partially due to shock value but it's also important to highlight that there is still dangers involved with you know abortion and like I said in my review like this is nothing, nothing more than you would see in a medical show and that's true but it is also slapped with a rated R and Really, I think that's more about limiting the viewership, especially with teenagers, that this could possibly involve than versus a something that is viewer discretion advised. And hold up right quick. So let's just say that no one's talking about this movie, right? Like Collider Movie Talk didn't talk about this movie. This movie landed fourth in the box office opening weekend, right under Captain Marvel and right above five feet apart, right? With Dylan Sprouse, and y'all know I love Riverdale. So, and this movie is a quote-unquote question movie, and this is a rated R movie, and there no one's gonna talk about how it is, ha, ha, the praise of this movie, or how, how this movie landed in the fourth spot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, of course the media is not gonna praise this movie. So, right. So, let's, I just wanna put it out there because no one gonna talk about this movie. So what? Uh, like, I'm glad. I'm just glad. Okay, so I'm just glad that people on YouTube are doing movie reviews for this movie, and people are actually talking and having a conversation. Because, like I said, this movie is very important. Whether you are pro chi, oh, sorry, whether you are pro life or pro choice, um, I think it is important to educate yourself. Right, going into the 2020 elections, I'm best believe abortion is going to be one of those topics and again if you are pro-life you should educate yourself and know about the literature know what's going on and if you're pro-choice and if your mind has not changed by watching this movie and you really think that abortion is not pretty but it's still necessary cool but you know as I said before on my Instagram I hope your heart does change and again I can go into more stuff later we'll talk we'll dissect we'll dissect it more also can i just say this tea is really awesome i'm not sponsored but like uh yeah the hibiscus life is good pure leaf yeah if you want to sponsor me go ahead because this is this is good i just need a break okay all right um, so let's go into the storytelling i think i think this movie was done well it was very straightforward straightforward as far as telling the story. It did its job as far as highlighting what it needed to do, right? And I and I point that out because I was talking to someone on another YouTuber about this movie. He was saying this is not an Oscar contender. It didn't need to be. He was saying like it jumps there's there's time jumps all over the place and it's like and I was like Mucho te see. Okay, so this isn't Dunkirk, this isn't Looper, y'all can follow it. Alright, so let's break it down. So, if he's talking about time jumps, 
we understand this movie starts like in 09 goes eight years prior when she started in Planned Parenthood and it goes two years prior in her freshman year when she you know actually had an abortion which is important because that's one of the reasons why she actually joined Planned Parenthood because she was in that situation and she wanted to help women in crisis how hard is that to um, comprehend it was pretty straightforward I don't think no one is lost on that you lost you lost are you J.J. Abrams? Who's last? Like, it is, it, we're, we good, okay? Um, and, like, let me just say, like, I don't want to talk bad about, like, other YouTubers, because, hello, like, hello, like, I'm super brand new. I only have, like, less than 100 followers, so I'm not going to talk bad. But I just want to highlight that if someone's going to talk bad about the movie, at least, you know, to have the right points or whatever. So, Talking about the religious stuff, and I'm really glad this movie didn't hit hard on religious as a religious movie, like a Christian movie, because this isn't supposed to be a Christian conversion. This is a pro-life conversion, and and I'm and I'm really glad that wasn't the stress of the movie, right? Because like yeah, I following Abby Johnson, I learned through Abby Johnson through Stephen Crowder, learned about her story, so I kind of knew it, her story going into the movie, and I knew that she was a Catholic convert going into the pro-life movement and while I would have loved to see that in the post credits um, that wasn't the important factor in this movie because which is good because pro-life is more than just being Christian you know it's it, this stance needs to hit people who are religious as well as non-religious this is about saving lives people are dying they are dying. Right? And so it, it, they did drive the point that this is about not just a Christian movie. So that, uh, that's a great thing to take away from this movie because, again, this needs to, this is important for a lot of people to hear and it's going to turn off people who are not religious, right? So, yeah. So also continuing like with kind of like somewhat of the religious um, stuff. So I got to see this twice and again, I thought it was great both times. Uh, so I got to see it first time with the Las Vegas Diocese at Town Square, and that was good. And I got to see it the following night with the young adults in Burbank AMC 16 before the 5 was shut down. And so that was really cool. One cool thing from that experience is that the, one of the producers was there, um, and then he gave a little talk at the end, and that, that was also really cool. And, and the vibe in that theater was a lot more powerful there was a lot more clapping involved and all that stuff so it was really great and not to hit a heavy heart like the tones of the religious stuff but talk having the producer there and give us like a little speech a little spiel about the movie and everything one of his main points that he was talking to us at the end of the movie is that God wanted this movie to be made because he was he had like budget cuts that was in the middle of the movie and like production was halted because they needed money and he got that money through a, a donor right and so it, his point was God want, wanted this to be made so um, religiously like the points I got from it was really great like um, again one thing that I want to stress is that I, I, I have a personal challenge that I posted on my Instagram is that I like my unplanned challenge is I want to give a conversation to those who are pro-choice and we can like, I, I will buy your ticket, we can watch a movie, we can have a conversation because, and this isn't just for my challenge but I encourage other people to do it too because when it comes down to it we need to have compassion, we need to have, we need to be able to talk um, and something that I learned from Queer Eye um, that I was watching uh, months ago is that you can't evangelize and antagonize at the same time you need to come with compassion or else that person's not no one's gonna like listening you're going to hell right and so you need to talk to that person not just on like just on a person to person to person level right you need to relate so again I am totally down to watch this movie with any of my friends who are pro-choice and we can have a conversation and, and maybe pro-life that don't know too much about this abortion topic and wants to learn more. This is, a, again, a great way to learn and, and figure out all this stuff, which is also goes into 
the political stuff. So again, I follow Abby Johnson. So all the talking points that I knew about her before the movie was brought up. You know, the fact that they were saying they need to double the abortion quota. And when it comes down to it, Planned Parenthood is like a corporation. It is a corporation. And in doing so, they are out to get money. And how do you get money? By selling abortions. That's how they get money, right? And so it is important politically to understand that because a lot of people are going to say like, hey, this is about women's rights. And in partly that's true. But the other factor is that it's about the unborn rights, right? It's like they said in the movie, they talk about the Holocaust, they talk about slavery, they talk about segregation, and in all those instances was dehumanizing a group of people, a set of people. That's what we're, that, in abortion, you're dehumanizing the unborn. You're calling them fetus, you're calling them a clump of cells. That's what is dehumanizing, and that's, I guess, what myself and why other pro-lifers are really about this movie is not about taking women's rights away in, in addition I mean there's also the father's rights of it like you know but it's not about necessarily um, taking rights away it's about making better decisions and so I think that's an, an important factor to take away from this movie overall the movie is great right and I, I like I said before the storytelling is fine um, the the message behind the movie is great Everything about the movie is it's it's good, right? And you should feel uplifted about watching the movie. And it is something that you you do want to share with your mom, dad, sister, brother, nephew, nieces, is to show your family and friends. It's it's again, it's a definitely powerful movie that everyone should encourage other people to watch. My last point before I wrap it up is more of the political sense again. So one of the Talking to that YouTuber that didn't like that movie, one thing that I mentioned is, or one thing that he mentioned is that this movie is not on the caliber of The Revenant and Moonlight, and I agree, it's not. Like, it, and like I said before, it doesn't need to be. And he said, and I said, like, this movie is very important, and he, and he, are, he countered that saying, like, a movie like Moonlight was probably more important than this movie, and I clapped back with him saying, you know, let's break it down. 2019, we have a black gay man faking his own hate crime versus infanticide being passed in Virginia. Yeah, I think abortion takes a little bit more precedence. And just going on that, you know, here, so, so people really don't know. Like, like I said, like I have researched through Abby Johnson and all this stuff, and I want to enlighten that to other people and hopefully. Hopefully you watching this, whoever is watching this, like you do your own research. You find out your the the hidden truths and things that are not said that the media is not saying to you. Like again, if you follow Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro and anyone who's arguing against pro-life, we already know fact, you know, incest, rape and medical complications are makes up like 1%, right? And if you think I'm wrong, you can fact check me, you can look it up. So again, majority of, ma majority of abortions are done out of convenience, right? So that's one fact. Another fact is, for those who don't know, Margaret Singer is the founder of Planned Parenthood. She was a member of the KKK. She planned Planned Parenthood to lower the black population, right? And also, in, the, in today, like, as we speak, like, Planned Parenthood targets the most vulnerable community, which is, unfortunately, the low income. And in this case, it is, like, the black and Hispanic community. So, in a way, Margaret Sanger's mission is still being accomplished today. And that is, that is crazy. That is eye-opening. Like, you, like, for those who believe in Black Lives Matter, like, by participating in Planned Parenthood, you are going against what you believe in, you know? And not just, not, this isn't, this isn't just speaking for minorities or anything, right? This, obviously, as a pro-lifer, like, this is about all, all unborn lives, all lives matter, <laughs> sorry. But, I mean, what I'm trying to say, like, 
this is we're trying to save all lives and and not trying to diminish it right and so it that's just another fact that people need to wake up to right and the last fact that I want to bring up and I, I can show a clip I can show it in in my description is that you know Road versus Wade is a sham look it up so Norma McCoyve aka Jane Roe faked her rate and then convert to Christianity and for the rest of her life fought against her, her own case. So... The story was a terrible one. She said she had been gang raped, gotten pregnant, was desperate to get an abortion. That's what everyone believed as long as Jane Roe remained anonymous. When she went public, she told a different story. You were raped while you were in Georgia? No, I wasn't. You were not? No, I wasn't. Oh, so all those stories that are in the books and so forth are not true? Yes, sir. Yes. They're not true. Right. And it's So think about that. The person who started Roe vs. Wade wanted to go against and, over, and overturn that decision. Everyone, this whole, the whole narrative of my body, my choice is... A lie. The person who who did Roe versus Wade wanted to go against that. How crazy is that? So yes, when it when it comes to pro life, when it comes to pro like going stopping abortion, I think it is very important. And and then like again, going into 2020, it's gonna be talked about. It's gonna be brought up to see like who is on what side and. I understand there's a culture war, I understand there's, it's so divisive and it doesn't need to be, it should just be, we should just fight for the unborn. This is serious. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about our constituents and all of our lives. You know, and then I guess people are going to go against that, like, hey, it, it's still my body, my choice, it's still women's productive rights, and I understand those points. It's just, I, I take precedence over the innocent life, you know, and when it, like, when it comes down to it, like, um, maybe, I, like, I don't know, I, I think I'm at a point where, like, if we can go back to a moderate view, um, keeping abortions under 20 weeks, I think people will be fine with that, you know? People are dying. People are dying. Hey, so wrapping it up, um, again, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram at HeyMitchMitch, and you can follow up my, up my other channel at It's Mandatory Fun. So thanks again for watching. Please like and comment below. Help me build my channel. I would love to be part of the conversation and help, and maybe you can help me build the conversation as well. So please follow me and do your own unplanned challenge as well. So thanks for watching you guys. See you in the next video.